Hello viewers. Well, there's something quite remarkable that I need to talk about. I woke up this morning to the news that the Australian Royal Commission has published a full report on its discoveries from uh, Case Study 29, which happened last year in 2015, uh, in its investigation into Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, the Australian Royal Commission, in case you don't know, um, it's a commission into the institutional responses to child sex abuse. Jehovah's Witnesses were involved in that process and the commission went into excruciating detail in trying to find out the extent to which um, Jehovah's Witnesses mishandle allegations of child abuse. What it found was frankly astonishing. It's difficult to describe just how negligent Watchtower has been or is being as we speak when it comes to dealing with such a serious matter. The main headline issue that came out of the Commission was that the um, Australian branch of Watchtower, Watchtower Australia, had kept records of 1,006 pedophiles dating back to 1950. So that's 1,006 pedophiles who had accumulated between them an estimated 1,800 victims. Now that is an astonishing uh, scale of abuse that's happened just in Australia. And as I discussed on my child abuse documentary, I'll uh, put a link here if, if you've not seen that yet. As I explained in that documentary, if you were to extrapolate those figures for Australia to other countries, um, the, the scale of abuse, we're talking about tens of thousands of victims. So this document that's come out, it's 110 pages. It's got an ISBN number and everything. It's a proper published um, document that the public is supposed to read. And on page 77, I'm going to read to you um, response of the Jehovah's Witness organization to the sexual abuse of children. It says, having regard to the various matters we have discussed in this report, we have reached a number of general conclusions on the Jehovah's Witness organization's response to the sexual abuse of children. We do not consider the Jehovah's Witness organization to be an organization which responds adequately to child sexual abuse. We do not believe that children are adequately protected from the risk of sexual abuse for the following reasons. The organisation relies on outdated policies and practices to respond to allegations of child sexual abuse. Also, those policies and practices are not subject to ongoing and continuous review. The policies and practices are, by and large, wholly inappropriate and unsuitable for application in cases of child sexual abuse. The organisation's retention and continued application of policies such as the two witness rule in cases of child sexual abuse shows a serious lack of understanding of the nature of child sexual abuse. The organisation's internal disciplinary system for addressing complaints of child sexual abuse is not child or survivor focused in that it is presided over by males and offers a survivor little or no choice about how their complaint is addressed. The sanctions available within the organization's internal disciplinary system are weak and leave perpetrators of child sexual abuse at large in the organization and the community. In deciding the sanctions to impose and or precautions to take in relation to a known or suspected perpetrator, the organisation has inadequate regard to the risk that that perpetrator might reoffend. This demonstrates a serious lack of understanding of the nature and impact of child sexual abuse. And then the final point, the organisation's general practice of not reporting serious instances of child sexual abuse to police or authorities, in particular 
where the complainant is a child demonstrates a serious failure by the organisation to provide for the safety and protection of children in the organisation and in the community. So this again is the report of case study number 29. It's a downloadable PDF. I'm going to put the link here so that you can uh, go and click on it yourself and download it yourself and read it yourself. But this is not some kind of crackpot, uh, biased, one-sided attack on Jehovah's organisation. This is um, a royal commission, a government, basically a government inquiry that has approached the subject of child abuse um, in Jehovah's Witnesses from a purely objective viewpoint and has interviewed survivors of child abuse, senior Watchtower officials, a governing body member, Jeffrey Jackson, that's a whole other story by the way, I've done a an article on JW Survey on just the the element of what Jeffrey Jackson had to say uh, in in JW Survey. Another link here, I guess, for that if you've not checked that out. But this this is a robust, um, thorough uh, scrutiny of Jehovah's Witnesses and the way they deal with child abuse. And by every conceivable measure, when it comes to the way. Uh, allegations are dealt with when it comes to the reporting practice, when it becomes when it comes to the disciplinary sort of judicial process of only males uh, being involved in questioning um, uh, abuse survivors, which is especially problematic if it's a female abuse survivor. I mean, there's so little leeway. And for me, the most remarkable part of the Royal Commission testimony, apart from the scale that we discovered, those 1,006 perpetrators, the most remarkable part of that uh, Royal Commission testimony was when Angus Stewart was grilling Geoffrey Jackson and actually served on a plate a reason to get rid of the two witness rule. This rule that you can only pursue allegations of child abuse if there is another witness or if there is another victim of the same perpetrator. He actually read Deuteronomy 22 verses 23 to 27 which describes a scenario in which uh, a girl is raped in a field uh, away from the sight of anyone else so it's just literally the victim and the perpetrator out of sight of everyone else and based purely on the girl's testimony, the uh, assailant could be convicted and basically executed. And Angus Stewart very cleverly applied this scripture to child abuse. He said, well, what's the difference? You have the same scenario where a, a victim and a perpetrator are out of sight. No one else can see what's happening. Why can't you apply the same principle to child sex abuse? And Jeffrey Jackson said, um, I certainly would like to ask Jesus that, and I, I can't at the moment, I hope to in the future, uh, but uh, uh, that's a hypothetical question which we, if we had an answer, then we could support what you said. But then, only two or three weeks later, Jeffrey Jackson sent in his answer, and apparently in only two or three weeks, New Light had given Jeffrey Jackson the answer to that question, and it was basically, uh, it doesn't apply, the two witness rule still stands. Um, it, this is only talking about a case where where the uh, perpetrator's guilt has already been established. And obviously the only way the perpetrator's guilt could be established in that context is if the perpetrator confesses to the crime, a crime that carries the penalty of death. So <laughs> why would the perpetrator confess if he knows he's going to be killed? So anyway, that was a crazy part of the Royal Commission and it demonstrated for me how even when the governing body are given the opportunity to get rid of the two witness rule on scriptural grounds, they refuse, they won't do it, even though the safety of children is at stake. But that was 2015, now in 2017, we're just on the verge of 2017 as I make this video, in March Jehovah's Witnesses are going to get dragged back before the Royal Commission 
as case study number 54. And that's when one assumes um, all of these issues will be put to them. Why have you done nothing? Because in the space since the Royal Commission uh, finished examining Jehovah's Witnesses, that was in the summer of last year, that was in the summer of 2015. And since then, there hasn't really been any change at all. I mean, we had uh, a letter uh, produced. I did a video about it, by the way. I'll put a, a box here so that you can check out that video. It was the, if memory serves, the August 1st, 2016 letter to elders. And not, not, not really any changes. The two witness rule was very cleverly not referred to directly but there was a, a passage where it said, we expect you to deal with allegations scripturally and according to, I think it was chapter five in the shepherd book and chapter five is where it has the two witness rules. So very clever how they worded things, but in essence, the policy as things stand right now is the same. Uh, no improvements made. In some ways, uh, the policy has actually regressed because now you have a situation, I'll just give you one example, where, um, well, first of all, elders aren't allowed to tell elders in another congregation directly if a pedophile is moving into that congregation. They have to do everything now through the branch. So it used to be that elders had some autonomy to warn the next congregation directly that there was a, that there was a pedophile moving into that congregation. Now even that has to go through the branch office. So that's kind of a regression. And another regression is a crazy rule whereby the do not call list, which if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, you know what the do not call list is. It's basically a list of householders in a territory who do not want Jehovah's Witnesses to visit. When you're a Jehovah's Witness, you, you, you basically are given these numbers before you start calling on doors on a given street. You'll be given a list and and uh, they'll say something like, you know, don't call on number 14, number 27 and number 53. And you'll kind of maybe scratch those numbers down. But what will happen is you'll get into a conversation and sure enough, you'll end up calling on very likely at least one or more of those numbers because it's, it's hard to keep track of them. But Watchtower wants to use the do not call list as a means of protecting children from child sex abuse. <laughs> So they've actually said in the August 1st, 2016 letter that if elders are aware of a pedophile who's moved into their territory, maybe it's a disfellowshipped pedophile from another congregation, they should put his, net, his address on the do not call list to make sure witnesses don't call on him. Well, I'm sorry, but if you're a Jehovah's Witness and you're doing the preaching work and you've got numbers from the do not call list, you assume that if you call on one of those numbers, the very worst that can happen is that you're gonna get a serious, serious abuse for being a witness. You don't assume that the worst that will happen is that you will be calling on a pedophile. So, uh, absolutely astonishing how the policy has even regressed in some places. But don't, you know, don't just take my word for it. Check out the report yourself. Uh, it's available there for you to read, uh, it's legitimate, it's a government report and it's extremely damning when it comes to uh, Watchtower's approach to child abuse. There were just a couple of things I wanted to add. The first thing I wanted to add is that um, even with this report, the problem of child sex abuse mishandling uh, among Jehovah's Witnesses is much, much worse than we know. It's worse than I've written about on JW Survey, and it's worse than this report says. And, you know, I'm saying that because, you know, information comes into me at JW Survey and the rest of the team at JW Survey, because there's now there's now um, four of us who are dealing with JW Survey on, on a day-to-day -day basis. We get information coming through that we can't always talk about or we can't always write about. But just to highlight uh, what I mean when I say the situation is worse, um, 
I, and I don't normally do this because I try to steer clear of, of saying stuff that I can't immediately prove. Uh, and I'm not going to give any details because there are people who who are relying who there are people who could get in serious trouble if um, if if details came to light that could track down who they are. But we know at JW Survey of a congregation, a congregation, I'm not going to say where, where at least one elder was removed as an elder purely because he assisted the police in reporting uh, child abuse. And he was removed as an elder with the full knowledge, in fact I would say through the direct action of the local branch office. And that happened, this thing I'm telling you about, that happened within the last six months. Now, I desperately want to prove that. I can't prove it right now without getting people in trouble. Um, but I want to prove it. And the minute the people who are sitting on this information, because bear in mind, they're Jehovah's Witnesses and they can get in a whole lot of trouble for cooperating with someone like me. Or even, as we've already seen, by cooperating with the authorities. I want to prove that because so far, to my knowledge, we don't have any proof of Watchtower doing that, of Watchtower penalising an elder for doing the right thing. I'm sure it's been happening a lot in the past, but this is at least one case that's happened recently that I'm aware of. And uh, if you're watching this video now and you happen to be in that congregation and you know what I'm talking about, please, please get in touch. Because I understand that you're in a precarious situation, um, but there are things that we can do to protect your identity. And it's important that this information goes on the record. Because at the moment, as things stand, it, you know, I could, be, I could just be making that up. You, no one can take my word for that. And I wouldn't suggest that anyone takes my word for that. I can only say that I know that it's happened. And I believe the wider world needs to know about it. So I just wanted to make, you know, put that out there and just to highlight the fact that the situation is much, much worse than even this PDF indicates that I'm pointing you to. And it's bad, believe me. <laughs> if you read that PDF, the situation is bad. I'm saying it's worse than that. Now, the other point I wanted to make, and I kind of alluded to this, uh, in my last video, which was about you know the Donald Trump election and what have you, I made the point in that video that uh, the world is beautiful, but the world is also broken. There are things wrong with society that make it extremely difficult for justice to prevail, for there to be fairness in the way things are dealt with. And what we're seeing with the Australian Royal Commission we should really be seeing in every country, every country where there are Jehovah's Witnesses should be giving Watchtower the same scrutiny that, the, that Watchtower is receiving in Australia. Every country should. I know that there's um, uh, an inquiry, that, uh, a commission that should be happening at some point in the UK. It's been delayed because the, um, the person who was supposed to be heading up the, the inquiry has been replaced two or three times. It's frankly a bit of a debacle what's going on with that. Um, nevertheless, I would urge every you know, abuse survivor to cooperate fully. But my point is, is that the world is not, the, the governments and the, the system in general is not treating this um, as seriously as it should. And the Australian Royal Commission, I would argue, is an exception. It, it's the, what's happening in Australia should be happening everywhere. And the reason why I'm saying that is, I don't think, uh, I think that there's an awful lot of complacency. And I think that both Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, even whose lives are touched by this issue, I think they could very easily fall into thinking that, oh, well, it will all be sorted out. You know, the world is improving. The world is progressing. Uh, people's attitudes towards 
child sex abuse now are far more sophisticated and everything's going to come out in the wash. Well, probably yes, in the fullness of time. But don't fool yourself for a moment by thinking that it will happen without your direct involvement. And I'm speaking to you now, if you are a survivor of child sex abuse or if you are in any way aware of things that are happening that haven't been brought to light. These, you know, we will not see improvement without your direct engagement. And especially if you're in Australia and you haven't yet been in touch with the Royal Commission and you know about uh, abuse, you should absolutely be getting in touch with the Royal Commission so that when uh, Case Study 54 starts in March, they have as much information at their disposal as possible. In the UK, if you know about abuse that's happening, you should be finding the website, logging onto the website for that commission and giving as much information as possible about what you know. If you, if you can report to the police, report to the police. If you're an abuse victim and you can hire a lawyer, you should definitely hire a lawyer. In fact, hire a lawyer now while there's still a watchtower to sue, frankly, you know, because <laughs> there's, there's all these cases that are stacking up now. And I, I strongly believe that we will reach a stage where a case gets filed against Watchtower and by the time that case, by the time the judgment is delivered, the Watchtower will have to say, look, we don't have any money to pay this. I, I strongly believe it might not have been filed yet. It might be filed in the next year or the year after or the year after that. But we have to reach a stage given the mountain of historic abuse that we're dealing with, where Watchtower, we, we don't have any more money that we can pay. We're, we, you know, we're bankrupt. We, we literally cannot pay any more money uh, in compensation. So um, my argument is the world, do not assume that everything's gonna sort itself out. The world is broken and we can only fix it together by taking action, by doing what needs to be done, and by speaking out. I can't stress that enough. Um, if there's one thing that you can do that's worth doing in life, it's protecting others, and especially protecting children. I cannot stress that enough. So that's all I wanted to say, really. Uh, check out the PDF, download it. A remarkable document. John Redwood has done a brilliant article on JW Survey just highlighting some of the key points uh, and you can be sure that when Case Study 54 starts JW Survey will be all over it reporting on what's going on. We're already talking about taking time off and, and that kind of thing. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and as always thank you for watching.